Hello and welcome to our CMMC Level 1 Conversation. I'll be your host, Melissa Heatley. I am the Marketing Manager for NSF ISR. Today's speakers will be Tony Giles, who is a lead auditor for ISO 27001, ISO 20000-1, and ISO 9001, and recently has become a provisional assessor for CMMC. Additionally, we have Rhea Dansell, who is a lead auditor for ISO 27001 and ISO 9001, and recently has become a registered practitioner for CMMC. And with that, I will hand it over to the team. Thanks for the intro, Melissa, and thank you all again for joining us. Um, today, we're going to spend some time talking about timing for CMMC audits and maturity levels, CMMC levels and who is auditing, what to keep in mind about CMMC assessments, how an assessment for CMMC level one will be conducted and beyond CMMC level one, and we'll end it off with some closing comments on CMMC. All right, so CMMC audit durations are currently not defined. Um, that's mainly because there are multiple factors involved in an assessment, and that could include anything from organization size, complexity, or number of locations. Um, but NSF does take those factors into account during the assessment planning stage in order to minimize business disruptions and also to help keep costs down. Um, for the CMMC maturity level, this is also not defined because it is dependent on similar components. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, organization size and complexity, but also the approach that organizations take to promote a strong security culture within the environment, uh, which is important because once that's established, it sets the organization up to be able to achieve a higher level of CMMC compliance. Um, another Another thing to keep in mind um, is that the process maturity is not assessed for level one. What are the CMMC levels? CMMC levels will range from levels one through five, but currently only assessments, assessment levels one through three will be available. The bulk of organizations seeking certification will require CMMC level one or CMMC level three. CMMC level two is being looked at as really a stepping stone for organizations to get to CMMC level three as they start to prepare their environment for the management of CUI. If your organization currently creates or maintains CUI controlled on classified information, you will be required to meet CMMC level three. In order to meet CMMC level three, you also have to include levels one and two. If your organization only has FCI or federal contract information, you'll be required to meet CMMC level one. So who is auditing? Assessments um, may start as early as next month, so January of 2021, um, and it will be conducted by provisional assessors and then eventually certified assessors, but currently there are only provisional assessors in the CMMC AB marketplace. Um, NSF does have a team member who is a qualified provisional assessor who is possibly on this webinar and is not me, so I've narrowed it down. <laughs> but during the provisional assessments, registered practitioners are also able to support as team assessors. Um, there has been mock CMMC assessments conducted, but this was done using DIPCAC assessors through DCMA. Thank you, Rhea. Um, so what we need to know about CMMC assessments, and this is so critical that we understand that it's planning in advance, and part of that planning in advance is really focusing on and defining the scope, what's going to be included within our CMMC assessment. Uh, fun fact, if you have CUI and you are applying for CMMC level three, you cannot scope out CUI. So we need to make sure we understand if our organization creates or maintains CUI, where that is, and how that's going to be included within our scope for the assessment process. Scoping should always be discussed up front uh, between the assessor and the organization. We look at objective evidence 
for measurement of practices. This looks at maybe two forms of objective evidence validated for each practice. And the examples are pretty, pretty standard with any assessment process. We will do uh, interviews with team members, and we really like for CMMC to do interviews with the users that actually perform the work associated with that practice or associated with that capability domain. We might also look for documentation review or demonstrations of practice. We'll look at testing or, or test results, um, output reports that might be provided. The process, uh, again, with any assessment is always a dialogue between the assessor and the organization. Make sure we can talk to the appropriate users, the appropriate individuals that are actually performing the work, and it's just an open discussion on the audit and assessment process. With the assessment team, there's pass fails associated with the CMMC and the maturity levels, so it's really a pass fail environment. When we look at level one, practice implementation is going to be very ad hoc. Uh, they must be able to demonstrate practices, so we'll look for a demonstration of practices in level one. And then level two or higher, we're definitely going to start to see or ask to see more recorded evidence and much more managed levels of cybersecurity. When we look at level one, we're looking for basic hygiene as it's associated with cybersecurity. All right, so level one covers six domains, um, access control, identification and authentication, media protection, physical protection, systems and communications protection, and system and information integrity. So the good news about CMMC level one is that these 17 practices should be performed, but not necessarily documented. And we do see many organizations with those logical controls implemented, but may just be lacking policies around these practices. How will CMMC level one be conducted? We talked about objective evidence for level one assessments. This will be commonly done through, through shoulder surfing, uh, demonstrations, watching, um, watching users work through an individual process. Uh, we will absolutely need to be prepared um, and the organization will need to be prepared with uh, some of the level one requirements. There are some tricky domains associated with level one. So we want to have our ducks in a row and really look at each of those capabilities and each of the domains. When we look at system and information integrity, it has four level one practices. This is a fairly complex security requirement, especially for level one organizations. Remember, you have to demonstrate how you identify report and correct information system flaws in a timely manner. And if we looked at an example of that, you say you have to identify, so you might do a vulnerability scan of your environment and it might give you a report. So you've done a vulnerability scan, you get a report, and then it's gonna show you if there are or are not any system flaws. You then have to show how you would let's say there are system flaws, you're gonna to have to show how you are going to correct or remediate those vulnerabilities or flaws within the environment and system. And you're gonna to have to do so in a timely manner. That timely manner puts a level of cadence into how often you might be running vulnerability scans, how often you might be reporting or correcting vulnerabilities. So as Tony mentioned earlier, CMMC level one practices involve basic cyber hygiene for the protection of FCI, federal contract information, um, and that process maturity is not assessed for level one. But for um, CMMC level one assessments, um, those will be based on an organization's ability to demonstrate all 17 practices through objective evidence, and that can be through interviews or direct observations, um, and also, Something to keep in mind is that all level one practices apply to every organization since the CMMC levels are cumulative. Moving beyond CMMC level one and looking at some of the next levels, you, as your organization may start to get CUI or access to CUI, you're gonna need to apply for other CMMC levels. That would be level three. And when you look at moving past one, organizations need to start to add in processes and plans. This plan planning portion should include things like mission statements, strategic goals and objective, um, 
relevant standards, project plans, resource training. There's a lot of things that may or may not be needed that are included in those in those plans. Organizations will need to show how that practice is managed. When we talk about CMMC past level one, we're into managed cybersecurity practices. And we can take one example. If we looked at access control and the um, activity associated with it, there could be a defined plan or there will need to be a defined plan with that capability domain in CMMC level three with a mission statement, goals, other types of requirements to meet that practice. When looking at access control, that activity might include an objective to control your CUI environment through user access. So that might be the goal. Uh, your uh, project plan might include who within the project needs access to CUI, and let's say user one, two, and three need access to CUI, and users four, five, and six do not. There's your project plan. So you have resources also associated with this plan, and let's tie in some training. Let's say user number three, which does need access to CUI, would need to be trained. So then you have to train that user on how they need to access the CUI within that environment without compromising or giving CUI access to other users in the environment that may not have access. Closing comments. And when we look at the CMMC accreditation body, they're there for guidance. What we see on the left side is a newly launched CMMC accreditation body marketplace. This is on the CMMC AB webpage. It's a great source for information. And, and guidance information. NSF ISR is working on becoming a C3PAO. We are not one yet, but we would also be listed on the CMMC AB marketplace. Um, we have to also remember that CMMC is a, is a new process and there is no CMMC expert as of yet. We're all still working through and, and learning to work through this process together. Um, NSF ISR does have two CMMC resources and we are constantly looking at adding more. Um, and we really expect our full, uh, full commercial assessments to begin spring of 2021. Thank you all for joining. We have contact information below. Thank you to NSF for hosting. And uh, Melissa Heatley, Marketing Manager, thank you very much for uh, hosting this and, and putting this on. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your time today. And if you would like more information from us, you can actually use that QR code on the screen right now to join our CMMC mailing list and you will get informed when we have new and upcoming webinars as well as new information. So we hope to hear from you soon.